Goddess Kring Radio. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kring. So welcome to Goddess Kring Radio. My name is Shannon Kringen. Let me start by saying this is going to be my first episode of the radio show. And I am, it's currently 2016. I am 47 years old on the verge of turning it on October 25th, basically 2016. I will turn 48 years old. And currently I am living in Seattle and one bedroom apartment. I actually have a boyfriend. I am, <laughs> for those of you who don't know who I am, uh, my name is Shannon Nicole Kringen and I was born in San Diego, California in 1968. I am the only child of parents who met at Arizona State University and they got married because of me and they moved to San Diego after Arizona were married for four years and then got a divorce and to make a long story short my mother is a visual artist and she's very private so I won't say a lot about that she's a spiritual person and an artist and again she's private so I won't say much about that and my father is very athletic they split up and divorced when I was four years old because they were very young when they when they had me and they just basically evolved and changed in ways that made it clear that they weren't really meant to be married so they were not happy staying with each other so they divorced I saw my dad on weekends uh, lived in San Diego till I was about nine years old and then my mom decided we would go to Whidbey Island so uh, my dad was a tennis teacher he also wrote comedy and folk music and sort of was very influenced by Bob Dylan and Joan Baez and Gordon Lightfoot and the Everly Brothers and my dad played a lot of really good music around me a lot of rock Simon and Garfunkel rock and roll the Rolling Stones and Elvis and Roy Orbison and the Everly Brothers and Frank Sinatra and lots of different music there's musical people in both sides of my family both my grandmothers played the piano I play the piano so my dad raised me with lots of music and comedy and he loves movies and knows the composers to soundtracks to movies my mother is very spiritual and earthy and natural and sort of raised me in an environment the good the good part of the way I was raised was very open and artistic there were bad things about the way I was raised because we moved around a lot and there was a lot of marriages and divorces and upheavals and shocking 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 changes in my life and my grand both my grandfathers died tragic deaths and both my parents were close to their grandfathers and not as close to their grandmothers so that's just a whole sad story in itself my grandfather was the first one in his family to move away from North or South Dakota where they were farmers on my dad's side we came from Norway on my mom's side and they were farmers in North or South Dakota and my grandfather decided I think in the 19 whenever Frank Sinatra was about 18 years old I'm not sure what year that was my grandfather decided I don't want to be a farmer I'm going to Hollywood so <laughs> my dad says um, he probably secretly wanted to be an actor but my grandfather was a bit shy about doing that so what he ended up doing is selling used cars in uh, I think Burbank California or Huntington Beach California my grandfather also promoted jazz musicians and ended up meeting Frank Sinatra when Frank Sinatra was only 18 and his career I think was just taking off and my grandmother apparently danced with Frank Sinatra because my grandfather used to throw parties and Frank Sinatra was at one of these parties and other famous jazz people that I don't know the names of my my dad when he was a kid got to meet John Wayne and shake his hand and got to meet Jonathan Winters uh, the comedian actually my dad got to have lunch with Jonathan Winters when he was a teenager and I can't remember how that even happened but he had an interesting discussion with Jonathan Wilt Winters about comedy and mental health because Jonathan Winters had some mental health issues and comedy he partly used to help himself cope with it um, 
long story, but a lot of really creative people actually have different things. So this is my first episode of my radio show, and I'm just rambling right now. I just want to say that um, <laughs> my dad's side of the family, that there's some Hollywood showbiz stuff that got started by my grandfather, basically, and my grandfather tried to push my dad into modeling, but he never wanted to do it. There's a famous ph uh, photographer in Hollywood who died recently called um, Peter Gowland, and he photographed lots of very famous Hollywood people and he was an amazingly great photographer and he photographed my dad when he was a teenager and it's just very interesting to see those photos and uh, my mom's side of the family I think we immigrated here from Ireland and England so my dad's side it's mostly Swedish and Norwegian and on my mom's side it's Irish and English and Scottish I think and a teeny bit of Native American in my blood but I'm not sure how much. So basically I was raised, I'm an only child, I'm highly sensitive, and we I grew up partly in San Diego, and then when I was nine, my mom decided we would move to Whidbey Island. And on our way to Whidbey Island, we lived in this kind of communal artistic evolution art institute was the name of it in Petaluma, California, and my mom took some art classes there and long story short, I uh, learned how to do silk screening and wood carving and metal smithing and I had lots of interesting adventures uh, for the first time in my life. There was no television. We ran around and did artistic things and there was Lightning Retriever of Gold, uh, a dog named Lightning. Um, I write poetry and I paint shoes and I do improvisational things. I did an improvisational TV show called Goddess Kring for 15 years in Seattle and public access and so that's how I got invited to do this radio show and my plan for this show which I'm going to call Goddess Kring because I'm known my name is Shannon Kringen so Goddess Kring is part of my last name. Kringen is a Norwegian name so Kring is a shortened version of my last name so K-R-I-N-G-E-N -E Kringen shortens to Kring, so Goddess Kring, and I call myself Goddess Kring because I'm trying to remind myself that within everyone is a god and a goddess. The, you know, the whole Namaste in India, they say Namaste when they greet each other, w which means the sacred in me greets the sacred in you. So it's kind of a spiritual mantra, calling myself a goddess, not meaning like worship me, uh, I'm on a pedestal, I'm a goddess, but more like Namaste, the God and Goddess in me greets the God and Goddess in you. Because I think within everyone there's male and female energy. But also some people think I call myself Goddess because I, I'm a nude model. For My day job basically is I model nude for artists, for painting and drawing and sculpture and photography. I'm the one who stays really still and is nude and they pay me to show up and be a good model for them. So Goddess, you know, when I think about the... Um, voluptuous statues that you see in the hippie uh, spiritual bookstores and you see the gods and you know the goddesses that are very curvy because I'm a bit curvy myself although my weight fluctuates up and down I stopped eating gluten or wheat about three years ago and easily lost 40 pounds without even that much effort although I do exercise and I've always exercised since I was 13 years old. My dad is a tennis teacher, or he was a tennis teacher. My dad is still extremely athletic and extremely fit. He's about 70 or 71, and he's extremely fit. Like, his body percentage is as low as a professional athlete. He's very, very, very fit. Um, so I, I am into fitness and exercise, although I've always been a little chubby. Uh, but I'm not really very overweight anymore, actually, but whatever. Um, my lean body mass actually is 125 pounds, so that means if I was starving to death, I would weigh 125. My fit weight is probably about 160. So I'm kind of built like a man, I guess you could say. I have uh, shoulders and rib cage and a big skull. <laughs> I'm five, five foot eight and a half or nine. Hey, found out Tom Petty is about five foot nine, so I'm thrilled by that. I have a huge crush on Tom Petty. I like to say, Tom Petty widens my jetty. I'll talk about that later. I, I wrote a poem about with Tom Petty and Tori Amos and got a Kring in it. So, my show is going to be improvisational monologues like the one I'm doing right now. In addition to 
clips of audio, music, uh, spoken word, poetry, and musical creations. Over the last 15 years, I have created a lot of MP3 audio tracks and creative things, and I would love to share those on this show. So I will splice audio clips of musical things. I will talk about topics. I will take questions and comments from the audience. If you want to email me, go to shannonkringen.com and find my email address and you can email me. Maybe you can even email me from the radio station. Uh, I might archive this show on different websites as well, wherever I can archive these audio podcasts for you. I'm basically somebody who struggles. I'm highly sensitive. I'm creative and I know that I'm very talented and creative not to sound arrogant or narcissistic, but I am talented and I know that I'm talented. Uh, Everyone has some kind of talent. I'm definitely very talented with composition and photography and color and design. I also do really great abstract designs. There's a lot of crappy abstract art in the world in my opinion and I think I've done some really well-designed compositions with my colors and shapes when I paint and draw. Uh, I've done that my whole life. I'm influenced by Hunderwasser. So basically I have a lot of artistic talent. To make a long story short, I have a lot of artistic talent, but I also have, like many creative people, I'm highly sensitive. And I had kind of a traumatic childhood in some ways, long story, not here to blame anyone, just saying that we moved around a lot, there was a lot of upheaval, and I was um, wanted more attention, and I wanted to feel more safe and secure and stable in my family life, and I didn't quite feel that way sometimes. So I have a lot of talent, but I also struggle with obsessive compulsive tendencies, uh, and anxiety and depression and uh, rapid cycling mood swings and a mild version of borderline personality disorder tendencies not to label myself but I have basically have a fragile sense of self at times and part of the reason why I love to take self portraits I I started taking self portraits 20 years ago before the whole selfie thing took off I um, love doing self portraits And part of the reason why, other than I'm artistically talented and I'm a model, uh, and I like to model for myself because I'm a photographer and I'm a model. So it's almost like when I take photos of myself uh, that turn out really beautifully well, I tend to think that I'm like the art director and the photographer and the model all three in one. So also I'm a little bit shy sometimes when other people try to photograph me and I'm afraid to really ham it up because I'm afraid it's narcissistic. But when I'm by myself and I take photos, I'm not afraid to try anything. I'm not afraid to look good, look bad, look anything. And I'm the kind of person that's, some people think I'm very photogenic. Well, the truth about me is that if you get me from the wrong angle with bad lighting, I look like the girl next door. I don't look like a model at all. But if I photograph myself with good lighting at the right angle and I'm very confident and I project some kind of good energy, I can look amazingly beautiful as as good as a movie star. So I have good cheekbones. I was blessed with a good bone structure and I love to be photographed, at least mostly by myself actually. <laughs> I love photographing myself and I do it because I have a fragile sense of self, believe it or not, when you see that I have over 900 self-portraits on my Flickr account. If you go to flickr.com slash photos slash Shannon Kringen, all you have to do is Google my name, Shannon Kringen or Goddess Crane, and you'll find a lots and lots and lots of things, which I don't have control over, but um, mostly you'll find photos of me. But I have over 900 self-portraits on my Flickr feed and you might think, oh my God, what an egomaniac, you know. But the thing is, I feel like I want to prove to myself that I exist and I want to prove that I am photogenic or there's something I'm trying to prove something or get something, a sense of identity, a sense of self. I also self-published a book called Uh, art identity and the sacred and it's kind of about how my art is a spiritual practice and sort of a meditative Taoist spiritual practice so I self-published a book and I have been painting shoes for 30 years since I was in high school 
and I got to meet Tori Amos um, three times, and I gave her three pairs of shoes the first time in 96, and she wore them on stage in Seattle at the Paramount Theater, and that was an interesting experience that I, I helped manifest, and her people were very nice to me, and she was very kind to me. And then I gave her shoes again in 2000, let's see, 1996, 2005, and recently in 2012 or 13 or 14 or something like that, but... I don't know. She does meet and greet before a show, so that's how I got to meet her, and she's pretty friendly to the audience, and she's just a very unique, um, beautiful uh, musician and songwriter, composer, and ta Tom Petty's my other favorite musician, songwriter, uh, ever since I was 11, and I heard Refugee on a Jukebox, and I want to tell a story about that. So basically, this show, Goddess Kring Radio, thanks for tuning in. I, I'm open to questions and comments. This show is going to be improvisational monologues. It's kind of like how I did on my TV show uh, for Seattle where I danced around nude and I talked about my philosophy in life and I shared stories about uh, my life. I, I sometimes, sometimes my show was a cry for help, some, but now I'm like 47 years old, so I've kind of grown beyond some of the drama um, but let's just say I have all kinds of personal issues and I'm working on the, on that. I have a therapist and I have, um, a boyfriend. I've been dating uh, this musician, um, photographer person for over two years now. I've known him for about three years and it turns out 20 years ago, he photographed me and did headshots for me and neither one of us remember that, but he found the proof shots in his, in one of his, uh, photo drawers of all these photos that he took years and years ago in the early 90s. So before I even did my Goddess Kring show, apparently I met him and he did headshots for me when I was trying to become a, a model, a plus size model for fashion, um, which I'm not really cut out for. I don't really have that kind of personality for fashion, but I don't really care about clothes. I'd rather just be naked in terms of modeling. I, I ironically or something, I find it more comfortable to model nude in front of people than I do to wear clothes. You know, whenever I model with clothes on, I feel a little dorky, like I should be more perfect. Whereas when I'm nude, I feel like I'm just this earthy, hippie goddess. You know, here I am, I'm a natural person. You know, I don't shave my armpits, I don't shave my pubic hair. I shave my legs sometimes. Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And the older I get, the less hair I have on my legs. So I don't really have hardly any hair on my legs anymore. But I don't shave my vaginal area and I don't shave my armpits and I haven't in like over 20 years and I like it that way. I don't like prickly rough hair and I don't like getting razor burns. So what the hell I don't, I don't shave. So, um, I'm for people shaving or not shaving, whatever you want to do, whether you're a man or a woman, Hey, just do it. You know, whether you're going to shave or not shave, you can bleach your hair, you can keep your hair natural. I don't see why people make a big deal out of that. So yeah, so this show is going to be me rambling on about whatever topic I think of. Uh, you can write me with questions or comments and suggest things you would like me to discuss. I could talk about spirituality, sexuality, nudism, naturism. I've been to Europe several times. I have friends in different countries I've visited. I admire the healthcare system in uh, socialized countries that have nonprofit healthcare for all citizens, and I've seen firsthand how it works. I have friends in England and Scotland and different countries in Norway, and uh, their healthcare system is pretty amazing. And it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than what we have here in the USA, which is very expensive and doesn't need to be that way. What else? We could talk about nutrition, exercise, fitness, spiritual growth, personal growth, um, therapy. Uh, I'm an only child and I have synesthesia. I'm left-handed. I'm very intuitive. I love animals. I love nature. I love plants. I love to um, meditate, explore. I love movies and music and sleeping. <laughs> So yeah, this is just my intro to my show, Goddess Kring Radio. Here it is. Thank you for listening. And now maybe I'll cut to something else. Like I'll play you a track of my music, I think, next. Some like poetic experiment. I might play you six minutes of Kring, actually. Uh, we'll see. I'll, I'll let you know in just a sec. I'm going to introduce the next piece very soon. So this is Goddess Kring Radio, Shannon Kringen.
Yummy honey dripping, dripping. Yummy honey dripping, dripping. Yummy honey dripping, dripping. Erase, erase. The former melon has been erased. So don't even look for that. So don't even look for that. It has been erased. And I will be gone henceforth. From melon can drink, can spit, can go, can stop, can run, can hide, can you make look, can make you see, car broken, sneasel core, crumple pumpkin, an avatarded, snub knocker, bunky sphere, don't touch the rhombus. Steadfast, headlong, strong, prayer song, shine light in ocean gong, rise up and remain, rise up and remain, rise up and remain. Hey, that was six minutes of audio, cring, speak, experiments, music, and my voice. And experiments. And this is Goddess Kring Radio. You're listening to. I'm Shannon Kringen, your host and your solo improvisational creator. And I was going to say it's nice to be on. Uh, thank you to Hollow Earth Radio for inviting me to do this. And I'm also going to hopefully store this on as podcasts on Mixcloud. Dot com. I think that's what I'm going to do. So if you're listening to this on a podcast, thank you for listening. And if you're listening on Hollow Earth Radio, thank you for tuning in. So this is non-commercial, non-profit, homemade, handmade radio for you. And it's nice to do something that's not about capitalism. It's not about buying or selling anything. It's about spreading ideas, spreading audio, spreading creative musical ideas and or just philosophy and speaking and I used to bang on pots and pans at my mom's house as a kid I grew up an only child of a uh, an artistic an artist mother a visual artist mother um, who's into meditation and spirituality and Eastern philosophy and so I grew up raised with a different kind of attitude and my mom put me in alternative school for a lot of that and I lucked out in my public high school had really good music and art teachers and let's see what's next this is going to be fun I have a full 60 minutes to create every week this is gonna be fun Goddess Kring Radio Shannon Kringen Goddess Kring Shannon Kringen Goddess Kring Shannon Kringen Goddess Kring Shannon Kringen Hey, I was just reading and I saw this quote that I like. It's, we are not in the business of fighting darkness. We are farmers of light. And the person that said that was Jewel, the musician Jewel Kilcher, who I actually saw live a few times because I volunteer at the Zoo Tunes concerts and I was able to see Jewel and Joan Baez and Jeff Beck and the Cowboy Junkies and the B-52s and Brandy Carlisle and Katie Lang and all kinds of great musicians so I love musicians and I was going to say that I love that jewel quote because it's easy in this in this world especially in the USA around this time of the election the insane presidential United States election where we have two candidates that are not my favorite I love Bernie Sanders I wanted Bernie Sanders I love his ideas and um, his progressive socialist ideas capitalist um, capitalism out of control is is really corrupt and crazy and I was just gonna say the jewel quote I like because I don't even want to say the guy's name you know the redneck that's running for office sorry if I'm offending anybody by saying the term redneck I guess I should keep this positive but I'll say that it seems to me that there's a phenomena of people sort of um, getting hypnotized by the male candidate that's running that is not my favorite person and it's kind of like shadow projecting and I feel like sometimes people will like somebody that wants to blame other people and never look at their own dark side so that's kind of how I would explain the phenomena of people kind of liking that person I don't really understand it fully but 
I want to focus on, I think it was Martin Luther King and Jesus that said, love your enemy and, you know, like build up the good things instead of trying to fight against the bad things. Although sometimes people do need to stand up and try to stop uh, the bad things that are going on in the world. But then again, if you, if you fight fire with fire, then it just gets, it makes a bigger fire. So I am more of a, um, focus on what you want to expand. And I will say that about the jewel thing, the jewel quote about, um, we are not in the business of fighting darkness. We are farmers of light. That's kind of, uh, the philosophy of wanting to not deny uh, the negative things in yourself or the world, but to try instead of fighting against that to like it's a war it to try to build up what you do believe in to try to nurture the garden that you do you know weed the garden but focus on fertilizing the earth and I actually wrote a poem about that fertilizer eyes are fertile fertilizer lies are fertile fertilizer eyes are fertile fertilizer lies are fertile so I also say authentic ejaculation of my soul molten orange liquid glow anger takes its toll blowing status quo so those are some of my Kring speak poems and po lines from some of my poems which I will share the full poems that I recorded later uh, in, in this episode or maybe the next episode but I'll say that I've been in and out of therapy for like over 20 years and uh, one thing about therapy I don't like is, is it, you know, you talk about your family of origin and your childhood challenges and then some therapists, you know, think that that means you were traumatized and they label you and they say you're this and you're that and therefore you have to heal and it might take a long time. And then there's other people who believe in mindfulness and neuroplasticity and how we can create what we want in the present moment. And the musician Jewel actually has a... a, a a movement on her newer website that's about that it's about mindfulness training and neuroplasticity and about how you can be in the present moment and take the reins of your life and no matter what happened to you in your childhood or whatever traumatic things have happened to you in your in your personal life with relationships or you know getting job situations or your rent getting jacked up since we don't have rent control here in Seattle where I live and rent can just suddenly go up. I'm lucky that I am renting from a landlord who intentionally keeps the rent low and he says he makes enough of a profit and I'm just so blessed and so grateful. Uh, but I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep living here, but I have a good deal on my rent and I'm very grateful and happy about that. But um, I just know that, you know, stressful things can happen and you can choose how you respond to those things. And so if somebody is conscious and mindful in the present moment, you can choose how you respond to life and not just react. And then you can try to get in touch with what you really want to create and try to create that. So I struggle with all kinds of issues in my own psyche, you know, of, of um, recovering from um challenges in my childhood as well as my adult life. I've had lots of uh, relationships that didn't work out too well. Right now I'm in a, um, a pretty stable, good relationship with a man and we don't live together. We each have our own places and I like it that way so far. And I was just going to say that, you know, when you find yourself getting into your old habits, then the, the main thing is to realize that you are choosing to respond in a, in a habitual way and that you can wake up and choose. Oh my gosh, there's one of my poems where I go, wake up and smell the Hitler done to Mother Earth. Wake up and smell the Hitler done to Mother Earth. And then I talk about, maybe I'll play that poem later too, about what humans have done to Mother Nature. Because, you know, there's classism, racism, and sexism, and economic injustice. But you know what? There's also what I would call speciesism. And I'm not sure if that's even a real word. But I will say speciesism, if it's not a real word, it should be. The way human beings sometimes think that we are, you know, we are supposed to dominate the planet. And we pretty much do dominate this planet. And it is amazing what humans have done, the way we've invented... Uh, buildings and plastic and computers and cars and 
amazing huge skyscrapers and airplanes and submarines and all these machines and, and this microphone I'm speaking into right now that's pretty amazing that we're so creative and innovative I wish that humans would do more to help the planet and have more solar panels and I wish that we would take better care of the plants and animals and I love people like Jane Goodall who are actually taking care of animals and um, I volunteer at a place that has uh, animals and uh, I love being around other species and so I feel really comfortable around other plants and animals and different species other than just human so that's one of my things that I care about and so just being mindful in the present moment and awake and aware of what you're choosing to create or how you're responding to life if you're just reacting to life you know that's easy to do because life can trigger you in many ways especially if you're sensitive but it's good to like step back and be aware of how you you know the choices that you have and how you respond you know you can respond with fear and anger or you can respond with compassion and kindness towards yourself and others and then make wiser choices usually if you're not if you respond f with anger you usually you know panic and f at least I do I, I freak out and make not as wise choices as if I yeah <laughs> as if I'm in a rel more relaxed compassionate forgiving state then I tend to make smarter choices in life what do you think about all this neuroplasticity and being in the present moment you know it's like you stereotype yourself when you think well because this happened to me therefore I'm a victim and I'm stuck in this blah 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 but then again I don't believe in denying like if something traumatic happens to you and you're wounded by it uh, physically or mentally I don't believe in denying that that it had an impact on you but I also believe in trying to have compassion and forgiveness towards yourself and then saying okay this traumatic thing happened to me and it it harmed me and now how do I heal from this how do I you know one of the first steps in healing is to acknowledge and validate and not deny that something happened that that harmed you but then you need to say okay this harmed me and I have a scar or a wound and now I want to actively try to heal from this and try to find support within yourself and within the community with other people or plants or animals I find um, plants and animals to be very healing for me sometimes what I need is just to go for a walk in nature and be alone and that helps me heal from whatever's going on because I get overstimulated by noise and by the city and I love being around nature and the whole ecosystem especially where I live in Washington State in Seattle there's lots of mountains and lots of water Puget Sound and lots of green and amazing trees and birds and uh, just beautiful plants and it smells so good out in the woods you know that the earth and the trees and the birds and the bees and the flowers in the trees I love nature I'm a nature girl. This is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. Thanks for listening. And since I'm a nature girl and I love nature and plants and animals and the entire ecosystem and I get something I would call speciesism. I get upset when, when I feel like humans are dominating and thinking that we're more important than any other species on this planet. I mean, sure, we're very creative and we've done amazing things and we've also, you know, kind of destroyed the planet a bit. Uh, but we have invented and created amazing things and here's a poem I wrote about this very topic called smell the Hitler done to mother earth wake up and smell the Hitler done to mother earth so this is a poem a Shannon Kringen poem that I recorded a while back enjoy torn and torn human form reborn dominating crocodiles cockroach slaughter rats poisoned fear of bats extinction of creatures people dominate this planet I can hardly stand it stranded polluted and uprooted wake up and smell the Hitler done to mother earth wake up and smell the Hitler done to mother earth <sighs> people dominate this planet I can hardly stand it earth drips blood Elephants, gorillas, tiger, humpback whale, grizzly bear, kind human.
human. Be, honey. Be kind, honey. Be kind, honey. Should be fashioned to have compassion for all living things. Who do we think we are? Humans dominate this planet. I can hardly stand it. 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 So I wanted to talk about synesthesia and music and the visual aspect of music. Uh, since I was a child, I have seen shapes when I heard music. And you know how when you record your voice, like right now I'm recording my voice on Audacity and I, I see the shapes of the audio up and down, you know, the shape of the audio track and it, it, there's an actual literal visual representation of the sound but I will say it's kind of like that except when I hear music like if it's jazz or rock and roll I see textures in my head and I guess it's just the music reminds me of certain like metallic shapes or textures and like something seems shiny like when I hear different sounds I I think of certain uh, music as sounding shiny or matte and some music is rough and some music is smooth just like music has a real emotional effect on a lot of people um, Tori Amos actually talks about this Tori Amos is a musician that I really um, love the music of and I've met her a few times and given her hand painted shoes that's a whole nother story I'll talk about that some other time but I'll just say that synesthesia is when the senses mix. And so like some people think that they can smell a color, like different colors make them think of certain smells. I know that when I hear music, it has a very, very powerful effect on me emotionally as well as memories come back. But when I, when I hear music, it's like it's a three it's like a let's see it's like a sculpture I think of audio and sound as three-dimensional space and so I hear sounds and I see the shapes and the textures and I associate different songs like for instance the band U2 have worked a lot with the producer Daniel Lenoy is that how you say his name their music is very spacious some music is like all songs create textures in my mind and so when I hear a song I think I'm like in a giant space or some songs seem like you're in a small space so some songs seem like the Grand Canyon and some songs seem like you're in a small intimate space like sitting by a fire so I literally feel like an atmosphere when I hear different songs but I also actually literally see shapes in my head when I hear certain like guitar uh, like Jimi Hendrix is actually a great example because Jimi Hendrix did things with guitars that most people didn't do or still don't do and I particularly see really cool interesting shapes and textures and I do and when I hear Jimi Hendrix I do uh, improvisational abstract art where I draw repeating patterns I like to say it's infinite intricate patterns when I'm in an airplane actually and I look down on the planet Earth and I see all these really cool like shapes of like mountains and rocks and like the geography of the landscape I see these shapes and I feel like when I draw my abstract Kringen designs it's like I'm I'm sort of like even though it's pure total abstraction and I'm not trying to make it look like anything real I think I'm inspired by nature by the repeating patterns I see in like seashells and rocks and mountains and cliffs and like tree bark you know all the different shapes in nature or like the paws of animals and teeth and eyeballs and ears and just the cool shapes the repeating patterns and skeletons and I just I think of repeating patterns and shapes and infinite intricate patterns and so I was gonna say that when I hear music see when I do my abstract art I'm inspired by nature and these are repeating patterns and shapes 
And then when I, and I think of it as symbolic, and then when I hear music, I, s I literally see shapes in my head and they move and they dance. So certain rock and roll songs, you know, sound spacious and I see shapes and, and it's not as much about the color as it is about the texture and the fact that they spin around in circles and sort of like spirals of DNA. So I wonder how many people have that sensation. Like when you hear music, do you just like think of it as sound and there's no, nothing visual at all? Or do you think about memories in your own personal life? Or do you actually see shapes? And I can also like stare off into space and just trip out. Like I don't drink or smoke or do drugs or anything, but I can stare at the water and just kind of trip out on the shapes that I see or smoke. You know, if I'm burning incense, I see the smoke rings or I stare at my cat and I space out and I trip out just on the shapes and just the sensuality, the smell, you know, the visual, the just different, I don't know, I just felt compelled to share about synesthesia. And I'm wondering if anybody listening has a different kind of synesthesia. I also feel like, you know, like if you see a painting, can you hear a song? Like do certain paintings or photographs remind you of a song? Or can you imagine, like, can you write a song based on a painting? I know Tori Amos has said that she's very inspired by visual artists. When she writes music, she actually lays things out on the ground or her floor of her studio, uh, like paintings and art and prints and colors and shapes of design and art books and stuff. And it, it kind of triggers her songwriting sometimes. Well, I feel the opposite. I feel like when I hear music, I'm inspired to create visual art and photography and my abstract, my, you know, total abstract painting that I do, which is totally improvisational. Uh, but then again, when I write poetry, I can't really listen to other people's music because I need kind of like quiet time alone to actually write musical poetry to really hear my own muse in my own like head or something or my my own like spiritual tapping into some spiritual thing that's beyond just me as an individual so you're listening to goddess kring radio this is shannon kringen and i'm just doing some improv for you synesthesia i'm curious also i was going to say when i hear like Mexican music I can practice I can like smell the Mexican food I love like jalapeno peppers and I grew up in San Diego and I was surrounded by like mariachi bands and you know Mexican music and color and when I when I hear Mexican music I th I can just smell Mexican food you know in my own head I can just imagine the smell of Mexican food and I if I hear Mexican music I start craving like enchiladas and like I just crave Mexican food. And then if I hear like Asian sounding music, like I don't know what Thai versus Chinese versus Japanese music sounds like necessarily specifically, but when I hear any kind of music that sounds Asian, I start craving like sushi and Thai food and like Chinese and Japanese and just like, you know, Asian food that has like a certain, I know there's a lot of different Asian cultures I don't mean to generalize, but you know, the general like rice and like certain uh, fresh smell of Asian food, it smells so good. And I can just smell different, like if, okay, if I hear music that's from India, then I think about curry and the wonderful smell of saffron and, t and turmeric and all the different curry sauces and Indian food and uh, basmati rice and all of that kind of stuff. So... I don't know how many people are like that, but basically the sense is mixed for me. It's synesthesia. And so when I hear music, I see shapes. And when I hear music, I can smell the food that I associate with that music, wherever it's from in the world. And what else? I don't know. Just music is very visual to me and the texture. And, the, and I just think of things as symbolic and metaphorical. And I'm just curious. Um how many people out there identify with this and how many people just have brains that are just different and that they do not like they keep the senses separate you know if something is is music or sound that's just sound and there's nothing visual going on 
in their in their minds and then when they when they see something visual is there no sound like do some people look at a painting and they just don't think about what it would sound like if it spoke you know like do some people have their senses completely separate because for me it's always blurred together and it's always been like this swirling mass of creative energy and that's there's pros and cons to that by the way I have a tendency to be kind of OCD obsessive compulsive in my thoughts and I repeating um, thoughts and words in my head and I kind of like repetition which can be good but it can also be very chaotic and it's not easy for me to stay organized I have to write everything down because I don't want to do everything digitally you know most people have like their Google calendars or whatever on their smartphone but I I don't do that because it's just I do enough things digital so I actually have a hard copy calendar and I write down everything I need to write down because there's no way that I could keep my schedule organized uh, I have like a random full-time freelance job as a model and I do focus groups I do so many different things for a living mostly I model for medical and art students I'll talk more about that later so I mostly wanted to talk about synesthesia and the senses mixing so this is Goddess Kring Radio I'm gonna try to come up with different topics every week this is gonna be every week for an hour but I do tend to be a bit chaotic and a bit repetitive so what I'm gonna do is record these shows and do like you know 60 minute mixture of poetry and music and um, improv monologues and then I'm gonna listen back and do like a synopsis write down a synopsis of what I talked about and then the week the next week I'm gonna try to come up with some fresh ideas and do s and also I would like to respond to questions or comments from the audience so if you're listening to me right now thank you for tuning in this is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring and thank you for tuning in and listening to my radio show if you have any questions or comments and if I get any hate mail or love mail I will respond to it I will react to it I will have sort of a dialogue with you whoever's listening about it whether it's positive or negative or neutral and if I don't get any response then I guess I will just live in my dream world and talk off the top of my head so there it is so yeah thank you for listening what's gonna be next and now I'd like to tell you the story of Eddie and his adventures in the great wide open you know, that's what it says during a Tom Petty video that I love um, people who know me personally realize that Tom Petty is is one of my shamans or one of my symbols in my life that has helped me throughout my lifetime since I was 11 years old and I'd like to play for you now a poem that I recorded and wrote about Tom Petty, kind of, and about just like, you know, the spiritual significance of different artists that I love, including myself. Here we go. Tom Petty widens my jetty by yours truly, Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring. Thanks for tuning in to Goddess Kring Radio. I am Shannon Kringen. Tom Petty widens Tom my, Petty jetty. Widens my Petty jetty. Mick Jagger, Mick Jagger struts Jagger in his dagger, in. grabs me. Tori Amos, Tori Amos Tori Amos doesn't, Tori Amos doesn't blame, blame us, but names us. But names us. But Neil Young, this Neil has young. been sung, has been sung. Washes, washes away the fertile dome. Goddess Kring, Bada boo, bada bing, bada bing. Stinging rings, stinging bada boo, bada bing, bada bing. Stinging rings, the cream. Catch the wind song, spiral drive, crack the code, left and right, no, left and right, no, left and right, anger takes its toll, blowing status quo, Tom Petty widens my jetty, Tom Petty widens my jetty, Mick Jagger struts in, his dagger grabs me, Tori Amos doesn't blame us, but name us, Neil Young, this has been sung, wash Away the, away the fertile dome, goddess cream, goddess cream. let it goddess seep from deep, deep within, authentic ejaculation of my soul, mulching orange, orange liquid glow, orange, liquid glow. Orange, anger takes its toll, takes its blowing, toll. Status, blowing quo. status quo. Status quo. Onward, upward, Onward, Kringodian up, pizzazz. Onward, pizzazz. Be yourself, no Be matter yourself, what they yourself, say. What they say. Tom, Petty Tom Petty widens my jetty. Widens my jetty. Widens my jetty.
So when I was 11 years old, I, I was in a pizza parlor and I am an only child of divorced parents. And when I was nine years old, my mom decided we would leave San Diego and go to Whidbey Island. And it was just very shocking. The climate, I missed my dad, I missed my, my school, my friends. And so I was actually quite sad and quite angry and didn't really know how to process my feelings. Had a lump in my stomach sometimes. Was very, very sad about it. Felt really weird. And I was in this pizza parlor on Whidbey Island, Gay 90s Pizza, 1979. I was 11 years old. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Damn the Torpedoes album. It was new. Refugee was a new song. I ran over to the jukebox and I said, oh my God, what is this? And my girlfriend said to me, oh, this is Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. My brother has his record. I bet you you can borrow it. So I ran to the jukebox and I really jumped up and down and listened and I probably put a quarter in and played it again. I am so glad somebody had a quarter and put it in the jukebox and played that song. Don't have to live like a refugee. Everybody's had to fight to be free and uh, reveling in your abandon. And just the lyrics resonated with me about tied up, taken away, kidnapped, taken for ransom, etc., etc. The song is about fighting for your rights. A lot of Tom Petty music is about that. So but to make a long story short, it's now like over 30 years later. It's like what, like 35 years later. I've been, I've been a Tom Petty music fan. Little did I know when I was 11 years old that he would continue to make amazing music and his music has gotten better and better and better over the years and every four years he comes out with a new album he's doing this mud crutch thing right now mud crutch and tom petty and the heartbreakers and he's done a solo album and work with george harrison and you know you know the story i mean tom petty's a pretty famous guy let's just say that he's very special to me because I didn't even see what he looked like. When I heard Refugee, I just knew I loved the sound of it and I had to know who this band was because their music was great. And I listened to the whole record and I listened to it over and over and over and over and Refugee was my favorite song for many years. Over and over did I listen to that song and it made me feel better every time I heard it. And so I, I saw the photo of him and he looked just like a grown up version of this little boy. This little boy, I used to chase around the playground in San Diego that had blonde hair and blue eyes, a skinny little boy on a skateboard. And I just had a, a big crush on him. And so Tom Petty, like sort of, not only did I, do I have a, a huge crush on Tom Petty, he just symbolizes to me to stay true to yourself, to fight for your rights, to do what you believe in and to be strong. He basically, him and Tori Amos both, a long story about Tori Amos, I gave Tori Amos hand-painted shoes. Tom Petty and Tori Amos are my two favorite um, musical songwriter composers. And long story, but I did request recently that Tori Amos play a Tom Petty song, which she was surprised. She's like, oh, my husband likes his music a lot. I don't know his music very well. She ended up playing Free Fallen, splicing it with the Sarah McLaughlin song, but that's a whole nother story. She did that in Toronto, Canada. Um, not here in Seattle, but she wore hand-painted shoes I painted for her in 1996 at the Paramount Theater. That's a whole nother story. Uh, I have a YouTube video uh, about why Tom Petty and Tori Amos are my two favorite songwriter composers. Most people think they're very different. I see a lot of similarities. They're both Native American, partly, and they both have, they're both kind of from the South. It's just a long story, but, and a prolific songwriter, very prolific. So let's just say Tom Petty today, I'm mentioning the Tom Petty story today on my first radio show because guess what? It's October 20th, 2016 as this airs live and it's Tom Petty's birthday. So happy birthday, Tom Petty. I am so glad you're still here making music. You're 66 years old today and happy birthday. If anybody listening to this knows Tom Petty or anyone associated with Tom Petty, feel free to say Shannon Kringen says happy birthday to you, Tom Petty. I love his music so much. I love your music, Tom. And there it is. So, and he has a radio show called Buried Treasure, where he plays, uh, I think it's on the satellite radio, he plays Buried Treasure. He plays music that he doesn't want people to forget about, old blues and rock that he loves. Not his music, music that he loves and he wants to make sure people hear. So Tom Petty is like symbolic and I have grown up listening to him since I was 11 and now I'm 47 years old and I still listen to his music and He's not just a classic rock guy. He actually makes new music. He's written so many songs, lots of really interesting, good songs. There's a new song recently called Beautiful Blue and Hungry No More on the new Mud Crutch album. I love those songs. I also love a song, Pirate's Cove. I think that's from Mojo. 
from 2010. So there's a lot of new Tom Petty songs that are quite beautiful. I know not everybody resonates with that sound, but he symbolizes so many things to me about believing in yourself and being strong and not letting anybody discourage you and and doing what you believe in. There's an amazing documentary directed by Peter Bogdanovich that's four hours long and it tells the story of their musical career which has had huge ups and downs and he filed for bankruptcy many years ago his house burned down by arson I mean he's a survivor so he's had an amazing life and I'm really glad he's still around so happy birthday Tom Petty and thank you for listening to the Goddess Kring Radio Show yay Goddess Kring Radio Shannon Kringen Goddess Kring Shannon Kringen Goddess Kring Shannon Kringen so many things to me about believing in yourself and being strong and not letting anybody discourage you and and doing what you believe in there's an amazing documentary directed by Peter Bogdanovich that's four hours long and it tells the story of their musical career which has had huge ups and downs and he filed for bankruptcy many years ago his house burned down by arson I mean he's a survivor so he's had an amazing life and I'm really glad he's still around so happy birthday Tom Petty and thank you for listening to the Goddess Kring Radio Show yay Goddess Kring Radio Shannon Kringen Goddess Kring Shannon Kringen Goddess Kring Shannon Kringen